It's an absolute death trap. We're alive! <laughs> it's not a good start. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada with Marcus Koff from PC Centric, Dr. Andrew Armstrong from the Back Office Show, and one of these, the brand new Tesla Model 3. And we're gonna go for a bit of a spin in it because you've been driving it for a few weeks, got a few first impressions. Let's take a look. I'm Andrew Armstrong, and I've been driving the Tesla Model 3. It's definitely not the luxury car of the X or the S. It's more the Ford Focus. First of all, it still retains the autopilot. So you have nine cameras here. You've got three up front here, camera in the side repeater, B pillar, camera in the rear, and a camera inside. Now, at the moment, nobody actually quite knows what the internal camera's for and whether or not it's spying on you the whole time as part of the black box system. Likely that it's going to be some sort of driver aid and it'll detect when you're uh, going to sleep, not paying attention or keeping your hands on the wheel like you're supposed to. So the door handles, unlike the S, do not um, pop themselves out when you unlock the car, but you've actually got to take this shoulder pinch to open it. So you've got to lead in with the thumb and that really confuses people. This sort of suicide door handle there. I've been speaking to a lot of people and they're still waiting for their Model 3s and they haven't been told when they're going to get them. And for similar money, very similar money, you can buy a Model S second hand um, with the battery still under warranty from Tesla. And I think you're probably going to get another still two, three years of that warranty. Given the features and luxury comfort of the Model S over the Model 3, the decision isn't so clear. However, there is one thing that does make all the difference. If you are a technology nerd and you want to have Tesla's latest platform that you know they're going to be developing on for the next probably few years, the Model 3 would be a no-brainer for that side. This is my first time ever in a Tesla Model 3. Foot on the brake, push the right stick down, put it in drive. Ah, the, tr the trunk's open. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good start. Round two, the trunk is closed. The boot, sorry. And we're off in the Tesla Model 3. This is awesome. Now, which side of the road do they drive on in the US? On the right. The incorrect side. The first thing you can feel is the regenerative, regenerative braking. Because as soon as you let your foot off, it slows a lot faster than you think because it's helping to recharge the batteries. It's really weird not having any of the dials in front of you. You've got everything on the screen from your speedometer to your sat nav to the battery, which I think may be a little bit distracting. I think a heads up display would have been really good. This is like the car of the future, so being able to see your speed here would be useful. But um, it's to make it cheaper than the. I guess, because this isn't a premium car. The Model S is still technically a higher end car. This is just a cheaper, more mainstream version. So they're going to cut down in some areas. All right, you ready, Marcus? <laughs> We're alive. Have you put it in pot? Now you press it in. We're alive! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's funny, though. No. You've had this for around about two weeks. How do you reckon it would get on maybe in somewhere not quite so straight road, obviously places like England? My gut feeling's telling me it's gonna do good. And the reason is, I think in Europe, we've got very clear lines on the road, very clear road markings. Everywhere I've driven in Europe at least has the cat's eyes and the old lines down the middle of them. Mm. So I suspect it's going to be good. I can't confirm or deny it, but if you take this car on some very tight roads, like the, see the overpass there where you've got these very tight roads, you can take them at speed and the back end is very forgiving. It'll let you know just about when it's about to sort of go. If you're driving this though in the rain, like we've had the last few days here, or in the snow, it's absolutely atrocious, at least on the tires it comes with. Really? You take your foot off the accelerator and it breaks. Um, it's like having just one pedal in the car. So when you're in the snow and you do that, the rear wheels lock up. Now, the Model S and the Model X have a low acceleration, wintry type mode. Right. Um, and I suspect Tesla will be adding that to this. What I do find distracting, I don't think that the navigation software at the moment is 
quite finished. I think that could be a lot better. So I'm never quite sure when my turn's going to come up and things like that. So unlike some other systems which sort of show you the lanes on the screen, and that, mm. it's not great on that. And you do find yourself looking over. Things like changing maybe the climate control or quickly changing your music and stuff. I think that's what maybe gets a little bit more tricky to do. If you've got your, you know, your music and stuff set up and you're using the controls on the steering wheel, that's, that's great. But I absolutely agree with the climate control. There's something about having a lack of tactile feedback, which is odd because if you look at the lights in the car, unlike the Model S, they put a tactile switch in these. I'm trying to open the glove box, never done it before. Uh, I'm assuming there's, that's heated seats. <laughs> Car. What about that button right oh, there? there, there, there <laughs> so let's talk performance for a second then. We're just pulling away from some lights. The 0 to 60 is something like 4.6 seconds being quoted and that's quick. It's quick. That, that, that's Audi S3 quick. But more importantly, there's bags of torque, and that's what you feel when you put your foot down on these. Now obviously this is an electric car, which means we're limited in range by the capacity of the batteries, um, charging, things like that. I mean, how have you found adjusting to having to charge your car? To be brutally, brutally honest, it annoys me right now. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I drove this car up from San Diego to Las Vegas and I had to make numerous stops at, at these superchargers. And but don't get me wrong, they're fantastic. It's free fuel, effectively. You get about 220 miles range, let's say, 250, maybe if you're lucky. But for that, it's gonna cost you at least an hour, an hour and 20 minutes of your time to top that back up. And the superchargers tend not to be in places where you've got any amenities. So at a petrol station, you've got toilets and drinks and food, or a supercharger. They're just in a car park, are they? Car park or scary industrial estate downtown. <laughs> but if you've got a charging point at work or at home, and you're using this for your commute, it's a whole different thing. Yeah, it's like having your car having a full tank of fuel every single time you leave the home, which I would say is a, is a massive benefit when you think how often people would actually do long journeys where you'd need to stop. And then even then you would probably want to stop anyway. One of the reasons Elon was saying that you only need one central thing is because the cars are going to be fully autonomous and this has some features that work right now. That's right. So you can tell his vision will be getting rid of the steering wheel ultimately, but you can engage your autonomous by pushing down on the gear shifter twice. So, And then, and I'm taking my hands off, it'll complain, but you're in autonomous mode and it's kind of scary. And is it going to stop? Is it going to stop? I'm going to break because I don't trust it. But I'm sure it would. Um, and, <laughs> and that's where you've got to have this sort of, um, you know, slight of mind to sort of just convince yourself that the car's going to do what it needs to do. Right, so I'm going to put it into autonomous now by hitting down on the control. And what you'll notice, it actually, it looks for street signs. Let's see if it gets it though. It's a 25 speed sign. It's supposed to spot it. Oh. <laughs> so it just blasted straight through that. Yeah, and it still says on screen max 45. Oh yeah, because you can actually override it. You can actually override the speed. What's really weird is that this is developed for the US roads and the US is the worst country in the world to have an electric autonomous car. So if they can actually get it to work here, they're going to be able to just get this to work anyway. Yeah. Tesla Model 3, what do you think Marcus, do you reckon you'd buy one? I genuinely might because I was sort of thinking about it before but realistically the problem is unless you've tested one and you've seen one, you're basically putting your money into something you have no idea about. You have to wait nearly two years, yeah. a thousand pound deposit and you've probably never driven one so... Just blind faith. Yeah. But having tested it myself, it's definitely not absolutely perfect, no doubt about that. But I've really liked everything I've seen. I like the way it looks. I like the fact that the center of gravity is so low and when you're driving it, it just feels just that, that good, really. Um, and obviously that acceleration that you only really get from electric cars with the instant torque. I honestly, I've loved it. So a massive thank you to Dr. Andrew Armstrong from the Back Office Show for actually letting us have a play with this Tesla. Do go and check out his channel. 
And also a big thanks to Carsoft and also Motorview.com where you can go and find out way more about the Tesla Model 3 and loads of photos and stuff. So go and check that out. Also, thanks, Marcus, for having a bit of a drive with me. And we didn't kill ourselves, which is good. Which is always good. All right, I'll see you next thanks time. Thanks for watching right here on The Tech Chat. PC-centric. And PC-centric. The Tech Chat.